Thanks for staying with us. So medical tourism is fast becoming a culture among many Nigerians due to deplorable states of the healthcare system in Nigeria. We're being joined by Baba Jide Lawson, a consultant, orthopedic and trauma surgeon. Remember, you can join the conversation. Twitter us at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp at 0818038 Thanks for joining us, Dr. Baba Jide. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so you listened in on our conversation earlier with um, Dr. Lamede. Yes, I did. What, what's your uh, take on that? What he said about, you know, he's trying to dodge beep, the beep, government. Because <laughs> <laughs> I believe strongly that, honestly speaking, um, the responsibility, you know, is very huge on government, right? But he's, um, he's of the opinion that we should do pu public part, uh, partnership, private partnerships, you know. Do you agree with that, 100%? I think the two of you are correct. Okay. Why? So, healthcare, just like education is government responsibility which is what you said yeah now there's nothing that is done without money mm -hmm. so now his own angle basically is if you want to fund the projects don't drop all the responsibility on government, government yeah. give an opening for the government to partner with the private sector I mean, there's the um, act about uh, the Consolidated Revol uh, Revenue Fund about getting 1% mm. to help to fund healthcare. Yeah. So now, if the government can articulate itself properly and get the public, I mean, the private sector on board to get some money in, then you may be able to do some work. It's the same all over the world. Hospitals are built, then public, I mean, private companies help out, and whether it's via funding of... Um, staffing, equipment. Ultimately, what you want to get done is that there is a hospital that is functioning and healthcare is available. So you are a medical doctor? Yes, I am. Practicing? Practicing. In Nigeria? Yes. Why do you, um, why do you, um, what are your experiences when it comes to medical tourism and why do you think people travel out of the country, you know, most times when they want to perform major surgeries? Is it that they don't believe in you or what? Okay, so let me answer. Uh, principles wise so when a person comes to the way healthcare is is you walk into the door to the door to the hospital see the doctor now from your conversation ambience and things like that it helps to make your decision for you that do I think this individual is competent enough to take care of what problem whatever problem I have now if you go to even from entering the public hospitals the way the place looks the ambience the staffing you could have someone there, the horror stories, all those things affect perception. Mm. Now, if perception is poor, you already, and I, I tell my younger colleagues that everything is based on perception. Once your patient comes in, you have to look the part. If you don't look the part, that's 10% of the work you've, you, you've added to yourself. Yeah. So once a person is comfortable with you, then at least, okay, correct diagnosis. Is this person competent enough? Yes. Let's go ahead. Now, there are, so I'm a surgeon, so it's, there's a common saying that if you've never had a complication, you've not done enough surgeries. Hmm. Hmm. So it goes without saying that even in the best of hands, there will be the complications. complications yeah. But the question is, are these complications avoidable? And that is where the Niger that your question comes yeah. into play. Is it that this person died because there was no light or no water in theater or oxygen ran out or there were not enough nurses on duty? Yeah. Avoidable causes. If those things are there, then of course it, it's a no brainer. You'd want to travel out to go and get care. Okay. The other thing there is, if you can afford it, why just take the chance of shopping around for a hospital in Nigeria when you know amongst your peers they tell you, okay, go get it done mm. outside. Mm. So that is one of the reasons why people travel. So let me ask you a personal question. If you were in a position that, um, I'm sorry, I have to bring it personal, but I just want to understand. If, let's say, someone close to you is mm -hmm. in a position where they maybe have this illness or something that they can be treated in Nigeria, but they can also be treated abroad. Of course, would you rather have them here in Nigeria or take them abroad? Okay. As a doctor. Okay. As you being a doctor. <laughs> okay. okay, I've been a doctor for about two decades plus now. <laughs> so I've seen the good and the no bad. bad. The frank 
Uh, that also means I also know a lot of people mm -hmm. in the field. So it depends on what you are dealing with. There are certain things that we're, we're fairly capable of taking care of. And there are certain things that the expertise just isn't there. So, so uh, high-tech cancer treatments and things like that, maybe the person is better served going abroad. Okay. So because it's also not also easy financing treatment outside the country. So there are a lot of things that you need to take into cognizance. So if it's, if it's a person close to me and I'm also in industrials, ask around what exactly is this diagnosis and what can we do? And even within that field. Now, your colleagues will be able to tell you this person is better served going abroad. And that applies to every patient. Because if you are open, I think one challenge we have as Nigerians is the level of distrust I, in I the agree. system mm -hmm. and in the, in the doctors, the nurses, people in the system. The perception. I always tell my, I tell my patients, it's your right to get a second opinion. So in the event that you want to get a second opinion, let your doctor know and he can easily give you a medical report. You know, sometimes you even go for the second opinion and they tell you something. My sister had um, typhoid for a while mm -hmm. and then she had to go through like five different diagnoses before we were able to put one and two together and we just figured, yeah, this, this. is it. We had to figure it out so, ourselves. So I was, I was just going to say that it's great that you've touched on the fact that there are treatments and there are levels of expertise that we just don't have in Nigeria. Yes. So given that, what is your opinion on what's been happening in the news with what is a very uh, key location for Nigerians in terms of medical tourism, with what is happening in the United States. How do you think it will impact? Because it, we, we typically think about the birth story, but mm -hmm. you've really touched on something that is key. There are people who won't be able Especially to get cancer care in Nigeria. So how cases. do you think that what is happening now and the steps that the, the US impact. is trying to take, how will it impact that? I don't think it's going to affect us badly. Um, most, most aspects of health tourism are not affected. It's just the birth tourism mm -hmm. portion. And in that, I don't even really think it's primarily directed against Nigerians. Mm. The Mexicans, the Russians, mm. and the, I mean, as in like, there is an <laughs> industry for those individuals mm -hmm. getting their people in mm -hmm. through via legal means, not uh, licensed, and not paying. I know Nigerians go abroad to okay. deliver. And we spend and money. They pay. We pay heavily. So if it is based on whether, I mean, those guys are going to lose a lot of money. A it is money. a massive industry for them. Yes. So they're not going to throw it away on the whims and caprices of somebody uh, that goes. It's not targeted against us, in my opinion, primarily. Yeah. There are other people that it's against. Okay, so what, what's your take? Because yeah, we're running. Yeah. <laughs> what's your take on the House of Representatives that we, we took that story today saying that um, um, they want to pass certain kinds of bans for, for members? Do you think it would truly impact the, medicals, the medical sector in Nigeria? Okay, let's be fair. Yeah. It is your right to seek health care anywhere. anywhere you choose. Okay. The only question now is how do you pay for the health care? So if they're saying you can access care anywhere you choose, that's fine. But the taxpayer will not pay. The money. Especially if it's something that can be treated mm. within the country. Mm. Because yes, there's a lot of angst and anger against them. But it does not change the fact that they're primarily human beings who can also have medical ailments that need to be taken care of. So don't trade with the baby with the bathwater. Yes, we don't like politicians, fine. But they can also be sick and they need to be treated. But their sickness always has cure abroad. Why? But you know what, <laughs> I, 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 do you know what this reminds me of? I think that we also don't apportion the right level of uh, prioritization to healthcare. Because yes. when you were speaking just now, I was remembering when the stories were going on about the clinic in Asorok. Yeah. and not having paracetamol yes. and all those things. And I think that, look, if even in the presidential villa, mm -hmm. you can't get basic paracetamol, then what are we saying? It's not about whether there's money or not. It's whether you value that thing enough to put exactly. money on it's it. It's priorities. Put things in place. Healthcare doesn't start and end in the hospital. Healthcare includes traffic. Healthcare includes electricity. Healthcare includes portable water. Even your, your health as in your workplace, how many hours you spend working, do you have leave, 
do you have recreation, leisure time, mm. all those things. Uh, all are, those are the things you call the social determinants of health. Yeah. Mm. So if those things are deranged as a consequence of the way the country and economy is, it will affect the health of the population in total. In total. So where do you see the role of health insurance, you know? Do we, do we really take it seriously in Nigeria? Because most times, even when you go to certain hospitals, if you are with a HMO, they put, you, they put you aside. Because I think they've been having a lot of um, payment issues with um, HMOs remitting the money to the hospitals. So do you, how can we tidy up that thing? Because I know health insurance can actually help, you know. But I think there's a lot of shady things happening there. I, I think... <laughs> I, Doctors I, I, don't like health insurance. I don't like health insurance. Yeah, why? why? Really? Okay, so first of all, first of all, one of the questions you need to answer is for you forget that healthcare is a service, mm -hmm. and we need to get paid. Mm -hmm. My wife is not going to go to the market and get Gary free <laughs> because her husband is a doctor. My kids are going to go to school. They won't get free. So they won't get free education because the government has not provided that. Yeah. So they need to go to good schools too. And that comes from money. And with the hours that I will have to work, I have to be properly remunerated. Mm -hmm. Now the HMO guys have to work within a budget, which you cannot blame them for. Health insurance also again, as alluded to the, by the former speaker, is something, like you said, government responsibility, but then you need to get the private sector in to fund it properly. Yeah. So in countries like the UK and Germany, in Germany you have close to like 99% coverage. Yes. So there's workplace insurance and then you also have your own personal insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the first question that needs to, uh, to be answered is how much will healthcare for Nigeria cost? Nobody can give you a figure. Hey. If you don't have a figure, you don't have what a to target. Work to work yeah. yes, towards. Yeah. So we can't go and meet the uh, private guys and say, guys, give us hundred million dollars or this is how much we need. We don't know. Hmm. So if you don't have a census, you don't know your population, you don't know what the needs are, you cannot effectively so an HMO cannot come and tell me my consultation fee they're gonna give me is one thousand naira. Twenty years, one thousand naira. Please go that elsewhere. Doesn't work. Hmm. <sighs> It's a big it's a conversation. Lot to, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to think about. But is is how can and I still think that and it's glad that you raised health insurance. I still think that there's even more hope for health insurance than there is for the government than there is for nameless, faceless, no amount PPP. So you just hit the nail on the head. I think that if we can even make uh, because I love the fact that health insurance now comes in ranges. No matter what you yeah. earn, you can mm -hmm. find some sort of health care. Yeah. So it is a solution, and it's a solution that we now need to find a way to optimize. So what in your opinion, so who sets the cost? So when you say a health company is offering you a thousand naira for consultation. for consultation, is there a way for you to make that case that says, actually, I'm worth 10 or I'm worth 100? How yeah. does that process work? Maybe you can give us some in insights two, there. In two seconds. Oh, okay, okay. First, first of all, if you can't cost your processes, mm. you're going to have a problem with. So the HMO is going to come with, um, the company gives a, a budget, okay, so we're allocating this amount per this member of staff, and they're entitled to social number of visits. Yeah. So it's going to be based on how much their budget is and what they believe they have to spend, and then work on those calculations. Mm. Now, they are kind of, they're a bit hamstrung because they don't have data to work with. Yeah. It's just their own projections and what the hospitals around are yeah. going to charge. Yeah. Mm. So it's a bit difficult. As long as you don't have your data, your statistics, and the government cannot cost your processes, because everywhere in the world, you ask for a, you call a hospital in the UK or in the US, there's a cost for the procedure. Absolutely. You can't do yeah. that in Nigeria to a large extent. Yeah. And you won't get Every hospital in. has no, different... Yeah. The things vary. And because based on also what they have invested. Exactly. You know, there are some hospitals that for, you, yeah. can't, you, you can't pay some kind of... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, based so, on their investment. So, so that's you, where you have to have government cannot things. escape. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone back to the <laughs> Yes, they cannot it, it always goes back to the All right, so catch us live every weekend from Fridays to Sundays at 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking, engaging, and informative conversations to your screen. You can watch a repeat broadcast um, from Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. 
it's been a very, very insightful conversation. <laughs> I've, learned I've learned a lot. Thank you so much, Dr. Babajide, for coming. Thank and you. remember, you can keep all the conversations coming on all our social media platforms. Let's hear what you're saying. In case you missed the quote for today, here is it again. So healthcare, it's a right, not a privilege. Do you agree with that, doctor? Yeah, 21st century thinking, yes. Yeah, <laughs> not Nigeria. <laughs> All right, so enjoy your evening. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>